Okay, so I've been a long time fan of Tekken, and I've been wanting to do a Tekken video once again for quite some time now. I've done a Tekken video way back in Season 1, and I want to do another video for Tekken. Now, I've been playing Tekken since way back in 1998, when I first played Tekken 2. Now, I know Tekken 3 was actually released in 98, but I played Tekken 2, that was the game that kind of got me into the franchise. Now, this video, I want to look at the, the weird and wonderful world of the Tekken world. Uh, the Tekken kind of franchise. That's what I want to look at. The kind of batshit craziness of the Tekken franchise. That's what I want to look at. And I kind of want to push a tiny bit of logic to this kind of Tekken universe. Say if they added any bit of logic to a Tekken tournament, a, a kind of a slightly more realistic logic to a Tekken tournament, how would that work? <laughs> That's what I want to look at. So I'm going to look at each in Tekken installment and look at the most batshit craziness of each installment and see how it play out if there's more of a real life situation. And I gotta say, I'm just gonna say this, I love the batshit craziness of Tekken. So Tekken 1, let's look at Tekken 1. Now from the character roster, relatively normal kind of characters. So we have Kazuya Mishima, relatively normal kind of character. Martial Law, very much a Bruce Lee inspired character. We have Nina Williams, relatively normal character. Paul Phoenix, once again, normalish character, but we literally learned in the end of Tekken 1 that he can punch through a brick wall. Just saying, that's pretty hardcore. Then we had Michelle Chang, normalish character. Then we had Yosemitsu, a freaking ninja with ninja armor and a guy who has a katana in a hand to hand combat tournament. We also had King, who's a wrestler, you know, with a mask. And that seems normal, you know, that seems okay. You know, it's a guy, it's a wrestler, and he's wearing a mask. That's relatively normal in terms of wrestlers. But we soon learn in the later installments that he communicates through roars and growls. <laughs> Which is weird, I mean, because he wears a leopard or a, a china mask or a jaguar mask. I'm not too sure what kind of big cash mask he wears, but still... You know, he, he, he wears a, a big cat mask. You you guys can actually write what type of cat he, he is in the comment section below if you want to. Because that'd be good. Uh, that'd be pretty good of you. But he literally communicates through roars and growls like a big motherfucking cat. And we also had Armor King. Armor King, which is kind of like if, <laughs> if King became Sir King, if he was knighted by the queen himself, this would be King. This is Armor King. He is Sir King. <laughs> I said, he's literally King with kind of a grey kind of Jaguar mask or grey fucking China mask or whatever mask. But he's wearing kind of like armor, like freaking armor, like a knight's armor. <laughs> and that's Armor King for you. He's a he's a wrestler who wears armor. Why not? We also had Kumba, who was a freaking grizzly bear, who we learn is a pet and slash bodyguard slash CEO to Mishma's corporation sometimes for Hayash Mishma. So this this is actually what Hayash Mishma's pet is. A freaking grizzly bear. And it just shows you how much of a manly man Hayash Mishma is that he trained a freaking bear. <laughs> yeah, trained a freaking bear karate. <laughs> we also had Jack and P Jack who were both robots. So I look, went into detail and I looked into the weight of the Jack robots and of course a grizzly bear. <laughs> Jack weighs roughly 360 pounds. So he's 360 pounds in terms of weight. So, I mean, that's freaking heavy to lift. If you were gonna suplex this motherfucker, you probably broke your back. You slipped the disc, motherfucker. Good job with that. Get yourself a chiropractor if you wanna try and throw this guy. <laughs> so in a tournament, this guy is a robot. If he punched you in the face, you'd straight up die. Now, a grizzly bear. Now, Kumba, nearly 500 pounds. So, if you're in a tournament and you've seen a freaking grizzly bear as your opponent, I'd be like, no, bro, I'm not fighting a grizzly bear. I'm done. Enjoy your trophy. <laughs> so, in Tekken 2, we learned that Kazuya Mishima has actually become the champion of the first Iron Fist tournament. And he decides, why not? I'm going to do my own tournament because, you know, it's cool. And we learn in the end of Tekken 1 that his ending was super surreal and super weird because we see him casually just throwing his dad, you know, Ashi Mishima off a cliff. 
and had some really cheerful music in the background because you know throwing a guy off a cliff is super casual super normal oh oh tekken let's just throw guys off cliffs <laughs> uh, but Kazuya Mishima had this demon form, and this demon form was known as the Devil, and we seen that briefly as an unlockable character in Tekken 1, but in Tekken 2 they greatly expanded upon this, so this was the final boss in Tekken 2, this was Devil, and he was all purple, and he had these font legs, and he had wings, and he shot like a laser of a third eye, and that was the final boss in Tekken 2 absolute craziness that was we also had a character by the name of roger a fighting kangaroo a fighting kangaroo who had an ambition to become a king of an iron fish tournament we also had alex alex who was a dinosaur slash lizard who you know wants to be part of a fighting tournament why not we also had a pretty surreal ending in with hayashi mishima so hayashi mishima grabs kazuya mishima throws him into a volcano and he casually flies off in a helicopter and smiles, you know, just, you know, <laughs> I just threw my, my son into a volcano and that's how I, I spent my Friday because that's what Hayashi Mishima done in Tekken 2. So in between the events of Tekken 2 and Tekken 3, there is quite a few characters were kind of introduced and uh, quite a few characters are kind of trained in between then. So Tekken 3, it takes place 20 years after Tekken 2 and we have a whole new roster of characters and we learn that Ogre is the main villain of Tekken 3. He's the main boss. So he's the, the main boss and he's this big green motherfucker because why not? He's a demon. And he himself has a true form, true Ogre. And I just feel they just want to apply everything to this character. I mean, they just wanted, whoa, whoa, what do we do with him? Bruh? It's like they, they got like a tender zone set. <laughs> All right, just draw what you think would look awesome as a final boss. And uh, I just imagine the tender zone just giving a, like, a snake for a hand and, and like yeah, a guy with big fangs and, you know, horns and, you know, with wings and uh, a guy who could burn you with fire and, and this is true org i mean this complete hybrid of creatures mixed into one to make this final boss we also were introduced to brian fury and brian fury was the core of course the robocop of tekken i mean he was a character a soldier officer who's killed in action in action and he himself was given cybernetic limbs you know cybernetic abilities because you know why not it's tekken this is totally okay for an Iron Fist tournament, a guy with cybernetic enhancements. This is totally normal. We also got a super jacked up Hayashi Mishima. Like, Hayashi Mishima is like 75 in Tekken 3, but he is still built like a tank. This guy is still cut. This guy did not miss any protein days, and he didn't miss leg days either, which is good, which is really good. We also had Gon, and uh, Gon was his guest character, was just a tiny little dinosaur. He himself was a manga character, and, you know, he was this cute little dinosaur who, you know, he could shoot fireballs out of his mouth and he used farts, and he was pretty useless, but, you know, he was he was there, you get to play as a dinosaur, whoop de doo We also had Gunjet, and I, I'm, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you could actually take out a minigun and just shoot people as Gunjack. I'm pretty sure that was one of his moves where he could literally just shoot someone. <laughs> so, I mean, just imagine that. It's like, okay, we've got a Tekken tournament and let's just have a guy called Gunjack who can shoot you with a gun. Why not? We also had this subplot in which Nina and Andy Williams were frozen because, you know, we're just like, well, we can't age these two characters. We can't make them old. So let's put them in cryogenic sleep. And that's what happens. They literally freeze both Nina and Anna Williams for, <laughs> for Tekken 3. They, so that's why they physically look the same as they did in Tekken 2, depending the 20 year difference in terms of timeline. So Tekken 4. Now Tekken 4, we learned that Kazuya Mishima has survived a freaking volcano. <laughs> I mean, he's resurrected by G Corporation, but still, he survived a freaking volcano. That's pretty impressive. A guy surviving a volcano. We also had a character by the name of Violet. He was pretty much <laughs> Li Xiaolong if he decided to just dress in all the purple he could ever find. I mean, he, he tries to 
he's in disguise as this uh, as this new character by the name of Violet. So it's literally just him wearing all the purple you could ever summon in a Willy Wonka factory. And that's Violet, a new character. <laughs> we also had Steve Fox. Now, Steve Fox was a British boxer, and he seemed legit normal. He's just a guy who refused to kick, you know. And that seemed, that was his thing, a guy who refused to kick. And that seemed legit because he was a boxer. But we learned that this guy is actually Nina Williams' son. He's a 21 years old, and Nina Williams in Tekken 4, she looks about 24, 25. <laughs> but that's the character dynamics between them two. Why not? It's Tekken. We also learned that he's been experimented on since birth by the Mishima Corporation. That's just Tekken for you. No one can be normal, even if you're a British boxer. So, Tekken 5. Let's talk about Tekken 5 now. Tekken 5 opens where Tekken 4 ends. So, we learned that um, Jin Kazama, he beats the shit out of Hayashi Mishima and Kazuya Mishima. And we soon learned that all of a sudden a shit ton of jacks come in. And pretty much surround both Kazuya and Hayashi Mishima, and they're fending off massive ass robots. Now, these robots are about 360 pounds. These robots are freaking massive, but these two are literally just uppercutting these, these robots into the air and shucking them around like ragdolls, because why not? They're both Mishimas. Let's not apply too much logic to this. Okay, so there is a situation where Kazuya kind of, he kind of backstabs. Hayashi Mishima and just leaves him there to fend off a shit ton of jacks and all of a sudden one day the jacks decides well you know what I'm gonna try and blow up this motherfucker and that's what he does he one of the jacks explodes and they all start exploding and Hayashi Mishima is caught in the blast and all of a sudden you get this font Hayashi Mishima is dead or is he <laughs> well that doesn't come up but I mean they do say Hayashi Mishima is dead but we soon learned that Hayashi Mishima has not only survived a big ass explosion that blew up a building, but he's completely unhinged by it because, you know, he's Hayashi Mishima. We were also introduced to a new gameplay mechanic in Tekken 5, juggling. Probably one of the best things to ever happen in the Tekken franchise. <laughs> the idea of just uppercutting a guy in the air and just juggling him. Just going in with punches and kicks, because why not? <laughs> like, could you imagine a UFC fight where like Conor McGregor uppercuts a guy into an air and decides to just do an air combo and <laughs> releases a bunch of, of straight jabs and kicks and like a 10 hit combo while he's in the air. Like this was introduced into Tekken and I freaking love it. It's amazing. Okay, so the main kind of end boss for Tekken 5 was Jinpachi Hamishima. And of course, that was Hayashi Hamishima's dad. And he himself was kind of imprisoned for years and years and years because Hayashi Mishima, son of the year, he takes over the, the, the corporation from his dad and leaves him imprisoned and his dad dies of starvation. And this mysterious entity comes out of nowhere and decides, hey, do you want to survive? And this entity, uh, it takes over uh, Jinpachi and that's how he survives for so many years. And, you know, he is ripped. He is jacked up like a motherfucker. I mean, this entity gave him all the protein that was ever produced in the world. They gave him all the protein. <laughs> and and he, while he was in prison, this guy clearly worked out. This guy clearly done all the pull-ups, all the push-ups you could ever summon. Because this guy is ripped. This guy looks like if Hayashi Mishima ate Hayashi Mishima, that's what Jin... That's what Hay Jin Pachi looks like. He literally looks like if Hayashima, Hayashi Mishima ate Hayashi Mishima. Does, that's his body mass. That's how look. That's how big he looks. And this guy's like 100 years old because Hayashi Mishima is like 77 in Tekken 5. And we learned that he himself has a demon mode and his demon mode involves having a mouth on the stomach that shoots out fireballs because, you know, why not? It's Tekken. We also had this really cool feature where each character they spoke their own language, which I thought was really cool, but there was moments where it's cutscenes of the game where you'd have two characters who were from who are rivals and they come from complete opposite ends of the world and they're communicating with each other. And both of them are speaking their own language. And it's kind of unintentionally hilarious because both of them are speaking their own language and somehow they're understanding each other because it's Tekken. So, Tekken 6, and we learned that Jin Kazama is actually the true 
uh, champion of the previous tournament, and he himself has become like super emo. It's like, oh my god, world domination is so hip right now. I'm so gonna take on this popular trend of being a dick. And that's what he does. He decides to be a super dick in Tekken 6. And he himself is after this like demonic creature, this ancient demon known as Azazel. He believes that Azazel could free him from his devil genes. I could be wrong, could be right. Put in the comment section below if I'm wrong. This motherfucker is about 10 foot tall. He's roughly about 1500 pounds and he shoots freaking some sort of laser beams out of his ass or some sort of crazy shit. <laughs> so you as a fighter, you have to go up against a 10 foot tall, 1500 pound boss because you know why not? It's Tekken. You gotta love it. So there's some characters in Tekken that wouldn't be even a tent of the, what this character weighs. But somehow Tekken are just like, well, you've got to defeat this main boss. So we also were introduced to Alisa. Now Alisa, of course, was a robotic type character, and she herself had like, like kind of a jetpack kind of coming out of her, of her out of her body. It came out of her legs, I think, as well. Also, she had the ability to actually have chainsaw, chainsaw arms, so she could shoot out chainsaws while you're fighting. So, if there was any logic applied to Tekken, it would go super Mortal Kombat all of a sudden. I mean, because you'd be just hacking off limbs and shit like that if they applied logic to it. But thankfully, they didn't because it's Tekken. Okay, so Tekken Tag 2 is currently the, the last Tekken that was kind of released on console. Now... Tech Attack 2 has this kind of, it doesn't have its own story, it's non-canon, but it, the concept of it is still batshit crazy. So you can partner up with various characters, but if you put logic to it, so say if you have like a guy from one end of the, of the world and another character from one end of the world, they're teaming up and they've never made sure and they don't even speak the language, but they're teaming up. Or you have a bear teaming up with a human, or you have a demon teaming up with a human, or you have two characters from completely different age groups teaming up and that's just tech and tag to you in a nutshell how freaking batshit crazy the team ups can be okay so so Tekken 7 now Tekken 7 is coming out I think next year or this year to consoles and from the trailers alone you can tell there's a bit batshit craziness so Hayashi Mishima's wife and Kazuya Mishima's Mother, she has come back from the dead, and I gotta say, for someone who has been dead for so long, she looks pretty fresh. She looks pretty good. I mean, she doesn't look like a corpse. She looks pretty good. She looks pretty fresh for a corpse. So she is apparently the main villain, the main antagonist of Tekken 7, as in, that's who you're going to face. You're going to be facing her. And <laughs> that's Tekken 7 for you. That's crazy as a guest there probably is going to be more craziness in Tekken 7 I just haven't pointed out yet because I haven't played Tekken 7 yet anyway what do you guys think of Tekken in a nutshell what's your favorite Tekken character what's your favorite Tekken game in the franchise put down in the comment section below what do you think of the batch of craziness of Tekken do you love it or would you like it if there was a bit more logic placed into it thanks for watching and subscribe to the channel if you like what you see